Today I'm recording this practical video that shows you exactly how you can get rid of warnings like this that can occur after replacing your VCSA appliance. So if you click on advanced here, there's no way past this. You can't bypass it. Uh, you just feel like you're stuck. So the fix is fairly straightforward. I'm working on documenting that over on the right. And to test my own documentation, I'm going to go ahead and record this video, following along with my own directions. So i um, going to hit Win plus R. Okay. And I'm going to type this, or in my, I can cut and paste it. Click OK. And it brings up Certificate Manager. We just say yes. So that would be one little tweak I can do. All right. Next. Continuing to follow along with the directions, it says navigate to Trusted Root Certificate Authorities and highlight the Certificates folder. And then look for something called CA. Now, you may have more than one, and you want to be very careful you delete only the right one. So to determine if it's the right one, double click, go to the Details tab, and look under Subject, and you'll see it says VMware Engineering, and then the name of the host name, vcsla.lab.local. That's definitely me. That's my problem. Now, I would not recommend saving this in your Windows folder. It should be in Documents or somewhere where it's safe. So if you ever need to recover the certificate, um, call it something like that. So we've exported it. Why? Because we're about to delete it. So now that it's already highlighted. Again, you want to be very sure you're deleting the right one. And now I can just hit the delete key on the keyboard. And because the correct certificate is highlighted and only that certificate, um, with confidence deleting it. Now that could be a very serious thing um, if you do it wrong. That's why we have the backup. Okay, so that's done. Now, do you remember I started the video and I was showing you, well, let's see, I had a link here with a nasty error. And it might still be there. Let me explain why. Because the browser's still running. So you're going to want to close all copies of your browser. And well, here's the shortcut that goes right to vSphere Client. It still might be broken. Why? Because the browser's not really gone. Oh, Okay, proceed to VCSA. So I am good. Now, if you find you don't have success when you think you've closed all the visible browser windows, you may have to go in and manually look for all apps that say Chrome and kill them that way, the, um, the nasty way. This is quite common. Chrome can, by default, uh, in some situations, even leave a stub of itself. That'd be true for other browsers if you're using Firefox or Internet Explorer or Edge browser. So. That's basically it. The rest of the procedure is really just test what you have. So I'm going to test web client as well, and I'm sure it can log in just fine now too. You're going to want to run Adobe Flash and allow it to run. All right, while that's launching, I can go ahead and click on the vSphere client, which is the HTML5 one, and obviously we're good there. Okay, the shortcut's a little bit wacky because when VCSA is replaced, um, that can happen. And a minor license key warning thing I'll worry about later. Okay, so we got that working, VCR client. Yep, same kind of thing. It doesn't like the shortcut I made because it was specific to a particular instance of VCSA and it's been replaced. So I may want to follow along and clean up those shortcuts. And the way I do that, there we go. Taskbar shortcuts article. This one gets you through everything you need to know about creating those shortcuts along the taskbar at the bottom there. All right. Now, that was all Chrome-based, a bunch of stuff I pinned to the start button. Sorry, the taskbar it's called. What about these other browsers? Let's see if those are working now. So I'm going to want to get VCSA into my clipboard. And we can do something like this. Just type it. Or not. All right, Internet Explorer, how's it going? More information, go on to web page. So it's allowing me to continue. All right, cool. But here's the thing, and then Edge Browser. That's actually that article that I briefly showed you there, but didn't really mention. In Edge Browser, which I know everyone has watching this video, you've got the ability to grab the certificate. So this has already been covered in one of my other articles, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. 
You can actually open this download zip, go into certs, go into win, double click the CRT, click on open, install certificate. I'm going to do local machine for all users locally. Say yes. Again, this has been covered in another video. And then place all certificates in the following store. Trusted, root certificate authorities. Next, finish. Okay. Okay, so we did two steps. We nuked an old certificate that was going to get us into trouble and keep our old browser from uh, working at all or any browser. And then install the certificate. Now we've really finished the cleanup and everything should open fine. If I hit F5 here to refresh, we can see there's a new one here, a different CA. Okay, I'm going to close that. We're done with all windows. And now every icon I have should work for getting into VCSA without warnings, without red X's. That's true with one browser exception. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so Internet Explorer testing, done. Nice. Okay, Edge, Microsoft Edge, correct, working. But let me just finish by showing you Chrome. The Chrome is happy and fine. And no red X's there, it's secure. And actually we can even show you host client if we want. Okay, nice, right? I didn't actually download a certificate separately for each host, but it just works. All you need is that one certificate. Okay, cool. So Firefox, I said we'd circle back and handle that separately. Why? Because it has its own procedure. I could do a get certificate. But nothing happens. It's not trusted, it has been uh, validated. If we click on view, well, there it is. But it's not a certificate that Firefox is going to want to trust. So basically, uh, confirm a security exception is fine for me. I don't actually use Firefox that much. But yeah, it does not use the system-wide certificate that all the other browsers do. So interesting, right? So we confirm the security exception. We're in. Now let's open Firefox a second time. And no warning. Well, okay, yellow bang warning. But not as nasty as a red X. So we're done here. We are back to a nice working state where everything is happy and there's no certificate warnings. Thanks for watching. And thanks for visiting tinkertry.com.